All right. Looks like we're live. Cool. Right on. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, today, we're going to talk about how to adjust your training with the uncertainty of coronavirus. Everyone's races are getting canceled, postponed to dates that aren't decided yet. So we've had a lot of questions about how to adjust your training, not knowing when you actually have to peak for it. This video is not going to be about the health and safety aspect of it. I linked to the video from USA Cycling in the comment or the description below. So check that out for the concerns with the disease. We're just going to focus specifically on how to adjust your training with not knowing when your next race will be. So yeah, from there, uh, we'll get it started with what have you guys been doing for your riders? I know you've spent the last week changing around schedules and things. Yeah, and I think that's uh, for all coaches out there. It's like, oh, I guess I'll be updating everything. <laughs> um, and it looks like uh, Coach Avery's just gonna be a few minutes behind you. I hear him coming oh. on there too. Yeah. Or, you good. Um, so I think, I think even kind of like, uh, I think between both of us, it's been really the last week full gas on updating you know, all those plans when it was even realistically, you had the, the Pueblo race planned last weekend. That was the first one to get canceled. But really for Colorado, our kind of like peak race season is like springtime on that. So literally it was going to be pretty much at least the beginning of April is going to be every weekend of racing really until mid-May. Yeah. And I think USA Cycling had issued, or this was yesterday or the day before, now all permits are suspended through May 3rd. Yeah, that. So that's kind of all the racing that we've got mm -hmm. upcoming. Or at um, least road racing, I mean track racing. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, the, the biggest challenge is keeping people motivated through that. Um, exactly. And, you know, kind of, you know, what are you training for? If there's nothing on the horizon, um, you start to focus on longer term goals. You know, something simple like just becoming a better bike rider. This yeah. is a good time to focus on skills and, and even like on that, that stuff sort of like we'll start kind of the beginning of every year of you know almost like in the scope of a sports psychologist of once again of like say what are our values like say you know intrinsically deep of with the thought of like say cycling is one thing we do on top of those just like you work which is one thing on top of that but it's a great time to outline sort of those I think you know so like say what do you like value you know uh, like intrinsically of like say what does Rob want to be known, whether that's as a coach or as a rider? Uh, and I think, you know, just a couple quick ones, which most of us that like to work hard, you can say, okay, well, a couple of my values are like discipline, hard work. You know, and there's certain things to where it's like the, I think the coronavirus and more than that, the uncertainty can lead to question marks of like, what am I doing next? But with the thought of those sort of values are what are going to guide you, you know, no matter, it's like at the end of the day, the race is something that you do on top of that, but that's not really why you do this stuff, right? It's right. to get better. It's to push yourself. Um, you know, it's a chance to, to progress, which makes us all feel good. So I think it's a great time to not only reset in terms of like, say, what do we have next for racing, but just a chance for like, uh, I, I heard a, or saw a really good word, um, I don't know if it was uh, Kate Courtney or someone on Twitter put it, but it's like, say, a good word right now is like, say, pivot. You know, I'm pivoting instead of here's what I was going to do. And now it's no value judgment of like, say, good or bad. But one, I think we get a lot of this sort of anxiety when it's like we're not accepting the situation, right? Of like, say, we want to like, this isn't matching up to my expectations of how the spring was supposed to go. I was supposed to be racing in one week. But it's like the reality of it is it's happening, yeah. you know, and it's going to happen. Like say, whether you want that or not. So I think just acceptance using that as a chance, like say, okay, and instead of just those races, now I've got just other goals. Like we had talked about really a great time to work on like a block of strength. Cause usually for coaches, especially once the season comes, right. It's like, we never have enough time to get everything we want to get done for our athletes, right? Like there's never enough workouts. There's never enough days in a week, especially when we had recovery. And now it's like one of the few opportunities where we do have time, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, and if you consider the kinds of gain you can make in the off season, you know, now it's sort of like another opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like the off season with better weather. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, especially for riders that got a late start, this is probably an advantage to them. Yeah. And I think even on that, so it's like we know at some point the races will come back, you know? So it's more of just like, will that be a two or three month adjustment to your schedule? Uh, but I mean, I think when it comes to 
late summer, fall stuff. I mean, I think for at least elite track nationals, my feeling would be that's still on. Masters, nationals, who knows exactly. But, I mean, we know there will be a national championship this year. Everything's just going to be just pushed a little bit later back. Yeah, definitely. Um. So I think that's, yeah, that, that's sort of like, say, acceptance of like, say, what does this actually change? And yeah, it adds some anxiety for sure on that. But it's yeah. like, at the end of the day, it's like, it, it doesn't change the big things. You know, it's small things and it's a chance once again of just, I mean, for me, you guys know I'm a big fan of like say the, the meditation stuff, which for me started off as a sports meditation and something I'll always push with my athletes. And that's also a great time now. It's like when you have all those thoughts in your head, you know, and that's at the end of the day, those thoughts that you have in your head, now that are attached to the anxiety of the coronavirus, those are the same thoughts that you have in your head right before you line up for a race, right? So yeah. uncertainty, what's going to happen? What if I blow it? I blew it last time. You know, so it's all, once again, a, another good chance to work on your weaknesses, which for a lot of us, you know, it is that mental gain. And yeah, just like what we're talking about working on a strength block, when we talk about the strength block of, you know, it's like that's something that takes time. And the same thing about just like the mental aspect. Yeah, but definitely. really, it's, I think the mental stuff you know, this brings it to light more now, but that is, it's like, say, it's a very underutilized area for improvement. Absolutely. With a thought of like, whether that's your training plan, whether that's anything, everything is going through your mind and yeah. getting interpreted on that. And then how you see that, whether that's, you know, negative, critical, however, but it's it's a great chance on that. And Chris, Chris and I had been talking about putting in a um, sort of a link with the meditation practice. Yeah. Usually, we'll put that in the video, but usually starting off, it doesn't need to be anything more than five or 10 minutes. And what most people find right off the bat is like say, as soon as you close your eyes and just try to just focus on your breathing, you know, a lot of people are, that's incredibly challenged yeah. for people. Like say a lot of people just have never quieted their mind or attempted to and just thought I'm not, you know, what, what basically comes down to I'm not the thoughts and the emotions and all the messiness going on in my head sort of thing. Yeah, and I think this is the mental side. Um, all the best bike racers in the world, they can adjust to whatever's thrown at exactly. them. They and can almost, almost welcome it. Yeah, they can perform even if things don't go to plan. Yeah, exactly. Um, and those racers that can keep that together and just be willing to adjust as things get thrown at them, mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing to figure out as an athlete. Yeah, for sure. A lot of them don't. Like, oh, I didn't get my 15 minutes of warm-up. I only got 10 minutes exactly. of warm-up. Or whatever the variable may be. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think that circles back right to kind of like the values, once again, of like just focus on doing your best to whatever you're doing sort of thing ultimately yeah. what can i control well that's kind of all i can control right there but yeah yeah the best riders i mean they are the you know the kings or queens of just being the executioner like say it doesn't matter you know it's like i, I still am going to get it done sort of thing and that's a that's a potent mindset i think though too just because once again that goes way beyond just doing something on your bike that translates to doing anything life. you do in life yeah. exactly yeah. absolutely and also i think just the biggest champions they also like welcome that hardship too it's like say i don't learn the big lessons when it's going when it's easy going and just simple but it's like you know the the, the best lessons are always going to be it's like down in the hard and the nasty and the yeah. difficult well they know that they've got the toughness and they know a lot of their competitors won't so that's why they'll embrace their challenges exactly for sure. yeah that'll be a filter on like say who who is the toughest yeah absolutely and once again that stuff can be worked on there's obviously people that are naturally better but all of us have that barometer that we can improve upon yeah that for sure it, that's definitely a long process yeah um, but it is it's everyone has the capability of like clearing their mind and, and mm -hmm. you know so you might not have the genetics of a Kristen armstrong a chloe or a sarah but all of us have the capability of working on a clear mind. You know, oh, that's absolutely. 100%. And that's one of those things to where that can be almost your best bang for the buck, even than getting stronger physically, you yeah, know, just absolutely. your mental game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what about specifics? Because I know one big challenge for a lot of athletes right now is gyms are being closed. So strength block is really good, uh, no doubt. But if you don't have access to a gym, how can you kind of recreate that on a bike? Yeah, I think even bike and even just even recreating, you know, if the strength and conditioning aspect is important to you, I, I think, you know, there's no reason why you, for a small amount of money, couldn't create, you know, even if it's a maintenance level of a gym at your house on that, you know, yeah. to where it's like, yeah, you're probably not going to be loading up 200 kilos of weight for your back squat for the guys, but there's 
lots of options even now. I mean, how cheap is a trap bar, like deadlift bar on Amazon now? Yeah. Like $50. I mean, yeah. really cheap. So, I mean, my, my thinking is, um, you know, get cre- now it's the perfect time to get creative on that stuff. A lot of times people at home, they already have some, you know, lifting equipment, strength and conditioning equipment. So just, you know, see what you can sort of come up with. I mean, and, you know, even if it's not going to Walmart to buy something, but just having Amazon shipped to your house. Yeah. Um, what you guys thoughts on things like body weight exercises and things like that? I know it's not proper strength building, but as far as something that could be beneficial, where I, do you guys fall on that? I think anything that's going to help you maintain things you've already done, right? I mean, even just the kind of mental process of going through doing things like planks and push-ups mm-hmm. and stuff like that, that's at least going to check that box of kind of getting you And even just, I think, helping it. people feel like they're staying on schedule, right? So right. even if it's not hey, this is the perfect thing right now, but once again, what, what, how, how do I do the best with the current circumstances I have? Because, especially for overthinkers, the worst case scenario for an athlete is to just give them a bunch of time to sit around and think. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so at least on something like that, of just giving yourself a mission, because once again, even that, doing it the best you can will give you a good feeling and that you've actually just you know achieved once again, you're maybe not going to make super big headway in terms of, like, say, maximum strength, but you're for sure going to be limiting your losses in terms of maintenance. And one thing I noticed that worked really well for me, people that have a track bike at home, big gear starts did a lot. It almost felt like a deadlift session mm-hmm. when I'd finish, like, a big gear, big gear start session. And you can, like, rig up blocks or get a friend to hold you. And that, that would be perfectly in line with, you know, when we were talking about the heavy back squats, you know, because especially when you're doing that stuff on the road, it's actually way nastier okay. on the road than on the track because oh, you're yeah. never on top of it. It's super heavy. It's super draggy. Mm-hmm. Makes, you know, once again, your goal with the big gear work is to get maximum load. So, I mean, on the road, on the road, you're going to get that, you know, way more so, especially compared to a 250 wood track for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then... Another thing that I was curious about, transitioning road workouts to something you could do on like a Watt bike or with a Zwift or things like that. How do you guys break those down to get the important components from a road ride to an indoor workout? Yeah, I mean, I think on that, it's a lot of it's probably going to depend on, um, you know, what the goal workout for the day. But what are, what are you, in terms of like, say, more on the endurance side, Rob, like what are your, some, some of your favorite like workouts that we'll do on the Watt bike? Um, so, I mean, a lot of the times when we've had to do rescheduling for weather and things like that, exactly. you know, it's been, you know, say 15 minute or 10 minute efforts or something like that in a relatively steady state, which is sustainable when you're only doing that once or twice a week or something. So like a um, 15 minute on five off or 10 minute five off. Yeah. And, you know, one way to kind of break that up when that gets boring is just to make it more dynamic. You know, maybe you do... 20 or 30 seconds sort of all out sprinkled in throughout it uh, one thing I used to do when I'd be trapped in a basement for the winter months would be I you know get on the trainer and then uh, I'd put on like a points race or something like that so then it would become like a 45 minute long effort and I would basically just ramp it up when they sprinted or uh, someone was taking a lap or something like that you know the goal of the workout would still be you know something in that sort of sweet spot um, for the normalized power, but ultimately, you know, just lots of surges and things like that, just to keep it entertaining. Yeah, that was always tough for me on a trainer, is keeping it entertaining exactly, and keeping right. engaged. Well, even that's, I mean, in principle, like say, we can all make it interesting, it's just more of an effort, right? The same way to where it's like, hey, there's a lot of these workouts you could do alone, but yeah. like, why would you, with the thought of like, you have a mental gas tank with a finite amount of like, energy to you, so why, you know, if you do have a, choice to make it more interesting I mean so even like say yeah using those videos I mean when I was younger yeah I was like say the Rocky series at my disposal but that's also before you know now you have so many cool options right I mean the Zwift stuff I mean people for sure not only should check that out for the workouts but also they have group rides they have races and I've seen that stuff in person it's like that's nasty yeah for sure on that and that's going to be just as hard as any race that you're going to sign up like yeah you're it's a virtual world but when Shana was in town last summer, it's like, say, that's just as nasty as any race. I mean, yeah. so you can't say there's no races because it's just like, well, yeah, it's a different definition of race. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that that is endless. You know, and yeah. you can say it's like, hey, there's races going on 24 yeah. hours a day. You could race every day if you exactly. wanted. Exactly. 
yeah, exactly. probably not ideal. But yeah. <laughs> please don't for, yeah. for, our, for our triathlons watching, triathletes watching. <laughs> they don't overtrain at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. Well, and for the moment, we're still able to train outside. Yeah, Maybe that might change in the future. I don't yeah. know. Um, but you know, using using things like Strava segments and stuff like that to kind of motivate. Yeah, exactly. you know, Go out and try to, you know, just improve those times. Yeah, solo efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Chase numbers. For sure on that. And, but nowadays, right, it's solo, but it's also kind of not solo. I mean, with the Strava stuff, right, it's like, say, you're still, you know, once again, it's a different version of competing, but yeah. it is in principle the same thing, you know, on that. So, I mean, I think, yeah, it's like I saw you posted one on John's segment for the time trial out by the raceway and all that stuff. I mean, I think of any time for this situation to happen, it's like we've never had more sort of like technology to bring us together in a sort of a, you know, virtual sense than we do now. And yeah. then, um, so yeah, the, the Swift stuff, uh, I'm a huge fan of that. I've only done a little bit myself, but have you guys any other, the sort of other systems out there? I know the Suffer Fest, like Neil in Boulder works a lot with those guys now. I, I just really haven't checked that out myself, but yeah. I've heard good things. I think it depends on the person and what they need to stay engaged like yeah. some people just like a workout telling them what to do mm-hmm. is sufficient me i'm way too adhd so zwift is really good because there's a lot going on yeah, like visual people stimulation. that chase yeah yeah um but i think it just depends on yeah the rider like zwift i know you can program in your own workouts and it'll control an erg trainer or a smart trainer mm-hmm. um but yeah what do you guys like um i mean i, I definitely enjoy more stimulus than not but I still and some of it's going to depend on the workout too, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I still also like that kind of like staring at a wall with no music, like mental training. Uh, but that's probably not for everybody. You do have the yeah. old school boxing yeah. coach look right now yeah. too. The Zen, the Zen training. Uh, so yeah, we got one question from Fryer actually. Oh. Um, since many people are at home and thus potentially under less stress than normal, could they increase their volume of training? If so, how should they go about doing so? Mm. Jeff with his handshake. <laughs> Hand crusher. Yeah, so that, that's Jeffrey. Jeffrey, who used to live in town, was one of our coaches and riders too. His his nickname was the Hand Crusher. So his his claim to fame was he broke a man's <laughs> hand by a handshake. So now, now of any time for the people to be safe from his handshake, it's currently <laughs> There's something to be thankful for. Jeffrey cannot crush your hand during the coronavirus times uh I, you know i would say for adjustment of volume i, I try to err on the caution yeah. about doing too much you know people will have with more free time they'll want to do more um you know you don't want to put yourself in you know like at risk to have yeah you don't want to suppress yeah, you don't want to yeah. suppress your immune system so i, I think right now it'd be a great time once again to kind of focus on quality, not just doing it to do it, but why am I doing it? What boxes does this check, you know? Makes sense. Because nowadays, I mean, with our power meters, you know, even once again, it's like, yeah, you're not going to be lining up, you know, for a race outside, but there's the options on the Swift stuff. But also it's like, we know nowadays, like what the race demands look like. I mean, with the power meters, especially on the track, like we can outline and quantify, here's what a medal winning ride would look like, whether that's a points race or a pursuit. And then basically breaking those up in blocks of each workout should kind of like check a respective box to hopefully satisfying those over time. Um, But in terms of like, say some of the endurance workouts, I mean, my feeling is, um, you know, so we have the longer stuff that we were just kind of talking about, which is probably just working on more, you know, FTP power, 20 minute power. Um, But some of the stuff when it comes down to real quality work, um, which, you know, I would, with Jeff's question, focus more on that. You know, even something of, you know, with more of our community community customers, we focus on something a little bit more like, say, creative. But when it comes to just training high level people, you know, we just like say, okay, you guys just get down to work. Yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to like, say, I think my favorite endurance building workout is really the three minute on, three minute off efforts that we do. Yeah, that one's pretty good. It's short enough that you can focus on it and it's over relatively quickly and uh, you can... It's, it's also simple enough that you can see the progression week to week. Mm-hmm. And the goal of that's going to be 115, 120% of FTP. Uh, and really, so we'll start off once again of like say race quality efforts okay. um, with the thought of like we don't need to be doing 10 or 12 of these just because you wouldn't line up for 10 or 12 races of like a 3K pursuit. Uh, you know, depending on your 
specific discipline that could say adjust accordingly. But once again, like what we kind of focus on quality is like say, you know, starting off with probably like say three to five quality efforts. But with the thought of we should be getting the same power for a three minute effort, that would be a flying 3K on the velodrome or something like that. And then just kind of like referencing that. But really it's like, uh, each week it should be chipping away of trying to do better than I did last week. You know, as the train load goes up, that might not always be achievable, but with the thought of like, say, okay, three race quality efforts, starting with the first one, you know, cause when it's only three minutes recovery, that's not full recovery for an yeah. effort like that. So you, you will be in a state of decline as far as like, say, yeah, if you're doing them correctly, they all three should not be the same realistically. Yeah. It should be the best PR one up here. And then, okay, I'm still going the same effort, but it gets not enough to hit that, those same numbers. But really, I think week one sequencing, you know, I think for, for you guys, it's pretty much three months on, three minutes off times three or four efforts. Yeah. Um, and then for us, for the Watt bike too, like we really focus, whether it's community customers or for our elite riders of, you know, even starting once again with a controlled structure, structured sort of warm up. And I know, Chris, you said that you had that sort of... Your warm up? Yeah, the yeah. warm up on I'll post there. that up now. Yeah, and this one... Uh, it's based through the scope of watt bike recommendations, but it's very similar to a, a GB sort of warm up with the thought of, you know, for a track cyclist, what would you normally warm up before your workout, right? It's like you're going to do your 10 or 15 minutes of warm up, not a lot of times on race day, it's almost like people somehow need an hour and a half warm up, you know, which is just like, that's if normally you're warming up 15 or 20 minutes before a workout and feel good, then why? Yeah. You need to warm up an hour and a half. Yeah, you why know? would you de deplete all your glycogen and yeah. raise your body temperature for no reason an hour and a half out? So it's more just like, say, um, I think just keeping that, once again, of like, we, we train like we race sort of thing. The classic idea of the idea is to get warm, not worn out. Yeah, and I, I mean, the, the warm up, when you like, say, list it on there, it's like, you know, it, the warm up should still be like hard for sure. Um, but not so much to where you're just sitting around like Rob said, you know, depleting all your glycogen for an hour and a half on that. But basically like a pyramid of, we do basically five minutes easy, just where you guys even can just talk and then basically just a version of like say a pyramid of like say four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. And the little chart will give kind of a percentage of FTP. And then with the thought of like, say that is your aerobic warm up, and then following say three or five minutes recovery, then we have basically our two sprints, which two to three, I guess you guys usually do three, but basically that operates as the anaerobic portion of the warm up on that. Okay. Um, and then really it's like, say, we had talked about, I think this in the last video, but you know, even before your race gets here, I'd like say practice that in your training. Don't just operate on hope on race day. It's <laughs> like say, I burn this in like a soldier just over and over and over. So race day doesn't feel like some alien day. It feels like a training day. Makes sense. Um, but yeah. Um, what, what other, besides that three minute on, what, what do you like for endurance stuff? Like say more VO2 maxi, like say more more high intensity quality workouts. Um, yeah, I think like really those kind of shorter efforts, you know, 20 seconds on and 30 yeah. seconds on stuff, um, you know, with kind of shorter recovery windows, that stuff still gives you some pretty good, uh, you know, input more or less. It's like, it's also really doable. Um, you can do a lot of quality in that area and then, you know, still kind of progress through things and, and it's going to be relatable to how racing would go. Yeah. And that's, I think a lot of like, say bang for your buck with those efforts. I mean, for me, it's like, I love, you know, whether once again, if it's a sprinter or endurance rider, but I think even more value for endurance riders, you know, those really nasty, you know, high resistance, low RPM, 20 second, like sprints on the wall bike. I mean, I think that is just worth its weight in gold in terms of just a lot of boxes checked on that and I mean for a lot of riders like say something they just normally wouldn't do on their own that's not something right. that you're going to get on the road even doing a group ride or for a lot of people yeah. even a workout but really like we'll start off once again the goal metric is that 20 seconds you know and even just week to week we'll track that you know because that's motivating too it's like I'm going and recording these values and hopefully next week even do it better but starting off with the thought of like say that the endurance is the easier of those aspects to add. So it's like say we'll start off like say 20 seconds. Our goal is say 80 to 90 RPM. So just with the wall bike that's like setting 10 with probably magnet four to five for most of the riders. 
but we'll start off the sequence like say 20 seconds on, two minutes off, with the goal once again that's still not full recovery, but it's enough to where you should be able to still produce some like kick ass like efforts yeah. on that, and then over time whether that's one or two or three months, basically the the recovery is going to basically just limit itself like each week. So maybe it's it's 20 seconds on, two minutes off next week, 20 seconds on, minute and a half off. In one of our key workouts for last Olympics, it was actually, you know, working down to where it's similar to a team pursuit effort of 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. So it's almost like one yeah. pull on, get back on. Um, but that's, you know, there's two of the most valuable workouts really, in my opinion, for our track riders last time around. So on the endurance side for aerobic, you know, it's like that three minutes on, three minutes off, and then the other key walk bike each week would be that 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. Uh, but once again, with the thought of like, say, you don't need to do endless amount of reps, we would focus on almost like breaking up a set as in it would be a ride. So it's like really, for a race, you're gonna be doing maximum three or four pulls. Yeah. That's what we'd have them do, say 10 minutes recovery, and then we'd say, okay, now round one, next one up, another set of those. Uh, and then so basically three sets of those 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off times three or four efforts. I mean, that is, even though in theory you say, hey, I'm only doing three or four minutes total work, but that if done right, that literally is like the knife to the quad of just like, oh, yeah. just really just direct hit for just pain. And empty the tank. For sure, yeah. And I mean, that's that's one really that, you know, it, it does. It's, it's There's a VO2 max effort if it's on off, but it's also so it's just like, very focused like weight lifting on a bike for like an endurance rider well i was even going to add um you know a lot of the efforts that we're doing you can actually in, you know increase right a, right a huge gear um and that'll add a just a different dynamic to it as well kind of getting into the strength exactly portion. yeah and even easier than putting on a big gear on the track or you know because on this you know you can put that kind of resistance on but for most the watt bike and most of the trainers out there right then you can also like change gear and spin easy though too on that right what about like structuring the workouts um, week to week, maybe month to month? We don't know how long this is going to drag on. Do you like to throw a little bit of everything in per week or do you like to focus on one specific like aspect of cycling and like strength only for like two or three weeks or four weeks or however, or a little bit of strength, a little endurance? How do you guys like to break that up? Um, well, that's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> I, I'd say, you know, you, you can always add a little bit of volume each week, um, you know, like add an extra mm -hmm. rep, um, just kind of anything to um, change it up as you yeah. go. So you're not getting stale. You're not doing the same thing over exactly. and over. Um, you know, and you could even, uh, you know, like maybe, you know, three weeks on, one week off, you know, just something in that kind of... Yeah, I think those general guidelines are always good. In the last video, we sort of talked about, like, say, the weight room. I know I'm getting stronger because I'm adding more weight each week or adding more reps or adding more sets. And that sort of term of, I mean, theory of just, you know, progression would be the same thing. It's like, as coaches, it's like you're always sort of manipulating the training load in one way or another, whether that's just building endurance volume or, like Rob said, <coughs> adding reps or sets to the watt bike workouts or kind of like, say, it should be each week, you know, it should be doable the first week. So if we say if we're operating off a four week training block, so mm -hmm. three weeks on, one week off, the first week it should be like, say, doable. Not easy, but it should be doable with the thought of just like if you'd be going in the weight room and working on your first week of squats, if it's barely achievable on a week one, it's like that does not, that's not going to set you up for a month full of gains sort of thing. Mentally and yeah. physically, right? Because like say, hard. exactly. Yeah. Well, no one just wants to get crushed of like, I have no hope of achieving <laughs> success on it. And that's why I think why a coach is so important of just being connected like that. Like you want it challenging, but you don't want it easy. You know, it's like, it's the blend of keeping, and of course all athletes are different too. It's like some like to be pushed to the max each day. Some need, you know, more of the positive reinforcement to show that they can do it. Um, but I think when you're talking about those quality workouts too, like how many, you know, maximum high intensity wall bike workouts or trainer workouts would you do per week? Um, you know, maybe two to three. Yeah. It really depended on how much I was going to get out on the road, which, you know, right now, if we have good weather, you know, and, and we're allowed to go outside, I'm, I'm going to take full advantage of that over that. But yeah. the, the watt bike workouts for sure, you know, twice a week would be ideal, I think. Yeah, and I think that's good for everyone. Even for like, say, 
whether that's masters riders or people that are more on a recreational level, it's like, you know, maybe their workout doesn't look like Rob's or the elite riders, but the same thing as like, say two, you know, I, th I think a good way even to translate this to athletes for the feel of importance, like you say, you there's two key workouts a week, mm -hmm. you know, and those once again, what we really like, you know, one that's focused on the aerobic side. So just like the three minute on three minutes off another one more on the sprinty side of that starting off 20 seconds on two minutes off finishing up at 20 seconds on 40 seconds off uh but i mean those are like the key workouts and then everything else is you know if we have the full spectrum of like all the boxes to check in training you know the goal would be to check you know as many as possible some of it depends on your sort of question there was like do you break it up in blocks and in my thinking and it's like we've tried a lot of different sequences you know for a lot of different events for me it's still always going to be the the best return on investment when we can break break it up in those blocks like a strength block or an endurance building block but of course not everyone has that luxury so a normal like master's rider you know it, you know can be the assortment platter and there's nothing wrong with that for sure it's like you should still be able to see gains from that because once with elite riders, once you get closer to competition, you're doing that kind of same thing. And you're almost like looking for maintenance in all those different categories. But given the luxury of time, which we do have, like say right now, of just focusing on of, I could use operating assumption of my first race is gonna be say in two months. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's three months, but you know within two or three months there will be a bike race. Yeah. That's pretty much, in my mind. Probably. So it's almost like say the, the season has just gotten pushed back, it hasn't gotten canceled, everything's just gotten pushed back on that. So now I've got, I've given this, been given this present, like say, oh, I get a bonus eight to 12 week training block, you know, and how do I want to use that? So maybe I want to do, you know, one month block of strength, one month block of endurance, you know, probably putting the endurance more for us anyways when the weather gets better, you know, in April or May. Um, but if just now is a good time to just, you know, that, that word that I liked was like the pivot and now you're giving the gift of like, say, oh, I've got more time to go through all this stuff and build because I, I would operate off the assumption of, yeah, the first bike race that you'll have is in two or three months. You know, and that's right. not the end of the world on that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, so. So um, on endurance blocks, like some countries, you're not even, they ban riding outdoors. I don't know if the U.S. will get there. If it does, how would you adjust like a three hour endurance ride to be something you could do on a watt bike or a trainer at home. Would you do like the same power numbers at that same time or would you adjust because you can't coast and yeah, I mean, we break it up I mean, cause in Colorado, especially this winter, it's been, that's been the story of the winter. So Rob would be a good one to touch on that just because a lot of those workouts that we'll do to where, you know, to look at it, it might not look, Oh, how's that the same? But then when you look at the power file, normalized power for two or three hours, you actually see it is. Yeah. I mean, if you figure, if you go on, if you're going out to do say the group ride on Saturday or something like that, you're going to, you know, the, the, the quality of work is actually going to be around 90 minutes. You know, everything okay. else outside of that is like lots of stop and go, lots of coasting, lots of like zone one, zone two. So if you just kind of sort of cut the fat of that workout, uh, and, and put it onto a trainer, you know, it would be something like maybe 60 minutes of kind of zone three with some, you know, again, surges to, you know, zone five or something, say. Um, and so, you know, I, I mean, what's going to be sustainable on a trainer? Probably not riding for three hours, right? Not you know, many so, people can pull that off. You know, just kind of reducing it down to, again, the quality of work. Um, we would do a lot of stuff here with, you know, four by 15 minutes. Um, and again, that'll get old, so you kind of have to add in other things. I used to do, well, I haven't done it lately, but, uh, you know, kind of changing it up with adding in 15 second accelerations into those steady state efforts that kind of just, you know, broke it up and made it more manageable. Again, I had um, just kind of like a mental stimulation there of something of like, yeah, to do. Well, and even just, you know, with the lack of racing now, right, which we're more or less planning on even for training purposes, um, you know, that's, that's just something that, you know, what's going to happen in a race, it's going to accelerate, you're going to have to recover at a uncomfortable pace, you know, you so it's, you can kind of figure out ways to add that into the training that way. And for me, it's like what I can say with the indoor stuff, it's like it is totally doable, totally achievable. It's like when Sarah had a back injury following like the 2008 Olympics, like there was literally like over a year where she couldn't even ride outside. Like, oh, wow. so where we lived in California is really hilly and she had a annular tear in the L4, L5. So it would just 
any sort of climb would just like say lock the back up. So, I mean, for her, it's, she still went on to win like a silver medal at the world championships that year, purely by just riding on a compu trainer literally for a year and a half. Oh, wow. No one's gonna sign up and say, that sounds fun. Yeah. But it's like say, <laughs> you, can do it, it, you yeah. can't, I've seen it done on that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and even on that, it's like, uh, I, I, on the challenge of that, cause I actually made her a bet. Um, you guys have seen like the motorcycle. So I've got like a, a performance bonus. I said, it's like, okay, if we can get this done, you know, because most riders, I think it's like that's so far out of their comfort zone of like a paradigm shift of like, say it's, I said, okay, I'll make you a bet. If you can win a medal by just riding the comp you trainer, I get X amount of money for this motorcycle. <laughs> for silver medal, I get this much for this motorcycle. And bronze, I get that. So I ended up not with the gold medal package, but the silver medal. So, uh, it's kind now, of a conflict of interest there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's a win-win though too. True. So now every all the riders get abused on that motorcycle now too <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving is that on that the one yeah. rob has now or no, no, no no this is another one this another is a blue one. Oh, okay gotcha yeah. nice um, so yeah good to know you don't have to do four hours on the trainer to maintain yeah. endurance and once again it's just i think just getting that out of your head of just like say it's you know we would always say people are unhappy or anxious it's like when you're not accepting reality right it's like so you're wanting to fight it like that's not what i want that's yeah. not what i want but it's like well yeah it is <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's what can you can control you can control your perspective and your mindset on the situation because at the end of the day what it changes is small things you know not big things it's adjustments and for most of us once again it's just even athletically right it's like when you look back on oh i was forced to do something i don't normally do what usually comes out of that right it's it's uh it definitely a pitfall to assume that every time preparation is going to be ideal, right? Exactly, this, yeah. th this is not an ideal situation. Like welcome but, to every bike race you're going. But you know, to. it's like say those biggest breakthroughs that most have always had. It's like because we were forced out of our comfort zone, right? Of yeah. Like say, I'm forcing you out of the rut that you always stay in, which is norm is known as your comfort zone, right? Yeah. Here's what I always do, which in reality always leads to these results. But if like if you want to change those results, that means inherently you need to change something, you know. So a lot of times I think whether people would look back and say, "Oh, that was a mistake," you know, something I didn't do on purpose. But really, it's like those big shifts, whether it's performance or even just you know, on the intellectual side of just new thoughts that come up. It's usually because you were forced out of that rut yeah. in your comfort zone. I, so I think that there's something to be seen in that. I should have uploaded the uh, performance triangle you've got okay. out front of the door. Yeah. <laughs> Where basically the more outside of your comfort zone you get, the more you tend to progress. The more opportunity, yeah. for sure. And that's scary, right? I mean, for oh, yeah. all of us on that. But I think when we're talking about the super champions, what they have come almost like, say, an awakening to, of like, say, oh, that's where the good stuff is, though. Like, that's yeah. scary. But when I first stepped out in there it's like okay I'm gonna be okay you know because it is it's like say for a lot of people it is it's just you know fear is such a big influencer on the decisions we make on yeah. that but it's like say once you get a feel for like oh it's like it's safe out there and that's actually where the mm -hmm. cool stuff is to be found yeah then that's a self-perpetuating okay now I'm even gonna go out and more but you know a lot of that stuff those sort of first steps you know once again all that relates to athletic performance too especially on high stress race day situations mm -hmm. But to where it's like, say, it's like, I'm okay no matter what. You know, yeah. it's going to be different. But if I accept that, like, I'm okay no matter what. Yeah. I just keep yeah. going. You see with a lot of elite athletes, too, where a lot of the great athletes came from less than ideal situations exactly. in life. Hardship. And they just know how to, like, grit through and fight. Mm -hmm. And and not be distracted, right? Yeah. It's like, say, I'm not going to be paralyzed by those thoughts and emotions in my head. I see them. But that's not who I am. Yeah, this sucks, but it's not going to always be this way. Exactly. Yeah. If I just keep focusing, keep pushing. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I think I say now it's it's a different sort of stress looming over everything. But in a lot of the same, in the same ways, it's like it's it's always the same thing in our head. Whether yeah. that's like say, the stress on race day or virus concerns or you know other things. Those are all thoughts and emotions in our head. Mm -hmm. You could interchange those however you want. You yeah. Know? Yeah, your mind's your biggest strength or your biggest weakness. Yeah. And, and, and then like once again, it's like, say, that's no matter how good an athlete is, it's like, say, that's something that, you know, everyone can work on. Yeah. But once again, the implications are far outside of just athletic performance. That's just like your life happiness and being at peace, though, too. Just yeah. no matter what comes my way, I'll do the best I can. That's all I can control. And I just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 
No questions right now. I think we're just earlier than most are. I don't have to be at work, so I'm sleeping in. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Maybe uh, everybody's doing their intervals right now. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. they're doing their intervals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you guys think would be really helpful for people to use to adjust their training with this level of uncertainty? That's also a big loaded question. But. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I will be briefly, I touched on it at the beginning, but just kind of focusing on the longest possible process, right? I, I mean, like a, myself as a bike racer, I'm not thinking about, you know, what was supposed to happen this month is like the crowning achievement to my bike exactly. racing journey. It's, it's it's what happens next year, the year after that, that's, that's what, you know, I would stay focused on to stay Stay big know. picture, basically. Yeah, just just to keep things moving. I mean, um, you know, it's it's not the end of the world, hopefully. And, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and I, I think for me on just, yeah, like say it's a great chance to like say reflect and even have more time to spend and make a better plan than you had. So it's almost, I think it was like say a, it doesn't really change that much. It's basically going to shift the season, whatever, two or three months. That's not a big deal. Now you have more time to actually get in the extra work that you'd want. So even just a time to like sit down with your coach, who at the end of the day, you know, if it's important to you, they'll always make the time on that. Yeah. So even just like say, hey, how can I best adjust? And when we're talking about performance anyways, right? It's like say no one for the most part, their main goal is not in April or, you know, May anyways. Yeah, generally. It's like say it's, it's typically going to be, um, you know, a later season goal. And then what am I doing to work towards that goal? You know, so now that's the same. You're just going to be working towards that. And then just a chance of, yeah, you'll be creative, but it's a chance to um, work on the, the mindset part of it. And also, it's like, say, I wrote a couple notes here. Just, I think, once again, thinking, it's like, say, ultimately, what does this change? It's just the small things on that. Uh, what does it not change? It doesn't change your values. It doesn't change, you know, basically your level of commitment. It's just that slight adjustment, once again, of just, being creative, which once again can lead to actually some good things in terms of performance, of getting out of your normal training ruts, doing something you wouldn't normally do, and then looking back, like say, oh, that provided a new stimulus I didn't have before, or something else on that. But I think on that, yeah, it's a chance to maximize the opportunity to just work on the mental game or just work on things that you just normally would not because you would like to go outside and ride or something like that, you know, so. Especially, oh, yeah, go for it. Well, now would even be a good time to do things like address your position or your pedaling technique, mm -hmm. things that you, you know, typically we're just going to let it slide for the year, you know, yeah. you have an, another opportunity a to extra time revisit now. that. Right. Yeah, and even being at home, though, too, you started off as far as, like, you know, the strength and conditioning stuff, and even if you're not doing heavy squat stuff, but then, too, just adding work to your schedule, just, like, you know, something like, say, those sort of activation routine that we'll do, with, especially before, like, a key workout. Mm -hmm. You know, that ends up being about 15 or 20 minutes for you guys. But with that, even just to saying, hey, uh, I mean, for me, it's like I'm a fan of doing a meditation right when I wake up. But in a lot of ways, doing something like an activation routine is the same thing. Try to do, you know, come up with some exercises. Um, but yet, when you're doing those exercises, you're not thinking about all these different thoughts in your head. You know, if you just want to focus on, I'm just going to focus on doing the exercise. That's all a version of meditation too. Just trying to keep your head focused on what I'm doing right now. You know, and this, of course, translates when we say on race day of being in the zone, right? Yeah. So the zone is just being able to focus on the present moment and, and doing the best you can do right now, sort of thing. But some of those activation exercises that you guys would do. Um, yeah, what do you guys like to do for activation? What are the exercises specifically? Rob really likes this ball toss. <laughs> yeah, that's a ball. partner one, though. So <laughs> I don't know if that, that, that's kosher for now. Uh, but, yeah, typically, like, uh, some sort of walking lunge, uh, you know, push-up. Step-ups. Up, Step-ups. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can do some sort of front squat, like, with a if you have a dumbbell available. Uh um, if you have like resistance bands and stuff like that, you know, a lot of stuff on the physio ball, you could do physio ball, like hamstring curls. We'll all come up with a routine of say 15 or 20 minutes, but they'll do it before like say important workouts. But I mean, really if it's high load stuff, you guys almost do it every day though too. Yeah, pretty much. But what I like on that one, it, it operates sort of as a team building activity. Now when everyone's in isolation, you can't do that so much. But it does, it's, it's, we'll always say it's like the version of like, say your cup of coffee, right? Because it wakes you up mentally yeah. and physically, right? I mean, that's the term of like, say, 
activation, activating the body, you know, in a lot of different levels to get the most out of the workout. And a lot of that stuff, even when it comes to just the sprint numbers, we'll for sure see an improvement on that when the whole body is sort of woke up, especially the big muscles, and then we'll do like the warm up sprints following that stuff. But I like it, yeah, twofold. First and foremost, because I think it wakes you guys up to like say, hey, I'm not going to like, I'm ready to execute. You know, as I say, it's not just, I'm not just strolling in half asleep and then the warm up wakes you up. This way it's like, this way we're maximizing the warm up is really part of the workout too. Yeah, and you see that too with like peak power numbers with like the warm up jumps. It's never your first jump that's the best. Yeah, which is counterintuitive, right? Because a lot of times people's like, oh, this, this, and this. But it's like, yeah, I mean, even for me, it's when we would have these Wingate tests over the training center, it'd be like, I'm doing all that before the <laughs> test. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> and now I'll say the same thing. Because it's like, say, you know, even on that one, when Barry Bonds came in, oh, he's like, say, yeah, he's like, I'm not going to be good on these. I was like, how much do you want to bet, Barry? You know, on that, where it's like, say, oh, so your best one was actually sprint number 10. It, and it was, yeah, too. Exactly, yeah, exactly, on that. So it's like... But a lot of that stuff, right, is like, say, one, and again, sprinters are always going to be hard-headed. But it does, it's counterintuitive, because <laughs> that would be, you know, but it is, it shows once the body is, like, fully switched on. Yeah. You know, then it's like, that's what it's made to do on that. Because for the Wingate stuff, literally, we used to do a lot. And it was almost like, say, you know, the the worst series of words for any sprinters like limited recovery it's like saying no i don't like that Get i don't the trash like those can. words yet, but it's almost like say that's but i think we also don't like it right because it's outside of our comfort zone yeah. too it's like say i'm not ready it's like well you better be well your warm-up protocol is a workout to me that, that's, I, i'll actually do that as my workout sometimes but yeah but i mean on that it's i think once again i'm just it's good to have that structure with the thought of like the walk bike warm up sort of operates you know, on a couple different levels. It also like to slowly get people used to like say a race warm up. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing, but whenever we have new riders come in, we'll always say it's like a use at least use this as like a building block, right? Some people might say, Hey, I want a little bit more work. Some people might say a little bit less. Some people might want another sprint or two or like say adding some more resistance to those. But I mean at minimum it's it's a good sort of guideline to build off of. And then that way, once again, of like, that's a controllable variable that you bring to race day too. So it's not, you know, that that sort of like, say, just like, well, you always use that analogy of like a trained soldier, right? It's like yeah. a soldier, when he goes to battle, he's not thinking it's like extinctual. You know, just like, mm-hmm. they're not, they're just doing what they do because yeah. it's inside of them at that point. And that's why for us, whether it's the watt bike workouts or even just, you know, um, workouts that we'll do on the track or even like the time trial stuff up Cheyenne Canyon the closer I think we can make that to race day then you show up and it's like say oh it's like I'm I'm comfortable here because this is where I live you know it's like mentally and physically I've been attuned to these higher stress higher pressure situations you know because when we'll do like the the Cheyenne Canyon testing it's like literally it'll be me holding the rider giving them a 10 second countdown which makes people at the beginning like what you know it's like say (laughs) because it's that same stuff of like oh race mode I thought this was like a training effort but it's like you know it takes just a little bit more effort from the coach but the mental response on that and then over time it's like that's your new norm right it's like say it doesn't add stress or pressure but whenever someone comes to first workout, it's like I always like say it's like even Shane or it's like it's always whoever it's their first time. They're like, oh, it's like this is like ser- I didn't know I was signing up for this like serious <laughs> test. Uh, um, and I definitely noticed like when I've been training consistently, like you can bury yourself more per workout. Like you can just dig deeper holes, but it, mentally it's easier to go there each and every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always thought that was a weird shift mentally. Yeah, and just even, yeah, it shows how it's malleable in your mind, you know, and even, you know, because for the road pros over in Europe, it's like, say, for men or women, you know, it's like their existence on the bike is very painful, Mm -hmm. always will be painful, you know, so it's almost like, say, it's not like they're just zoning out and becoming completely numb to that, but it's recalibrating, of, and that's what's awesome about just human physiology, right, of just so much of that and that kind of circles back to the mind too of like what's possible and as soon as like say you know you can hit 23 or 2400 watts on the watt bike sprint okay well 2200 (laughs) then it's more like say okay well 
it's achievable because someone's doing that right. You know, yeah. and I think there's lots of examples of that. But for me, that's where the really cool aspect, where the mental and physical aspect kind of comes together. And, and I think that part is important for coaches too, what we try to create of just like say, um, the balance of being supportive, but yet also it's like say, well, I know you can achieve it, so let's just keep going with that though too. Yeah. Uh, one thing I always liked, and hearing you uh, encourage writers mid workout, I'm pretty sure you agree. But like the visual visualization, like in your head, every effort is like lining up for a World Cup nationals, whatever your key race may exactly, be. Exactly. Yeah. Like you just try to get your head in that mode to where you just dump everything into the effort. Yeah, and even on just that of just once again, what can I control? You know, so you'll you'll hear when I'm you know heckling people of just it is. It's like say, at the end of the day doesn't need to be perfection, but it's just that always the key word of that sort of progression. Like say, when that effort's over, do I look back and say that was my best possible effort? You know, because yeah. a lot of the top athletes, I mean, you know, no matter what they win or what they achieve, it's, you know, unfortunately it's like say they're not gonna be happy just because that's in their mindset of that, which makes them very potent at what they do. But that's not, that's not a real, healthy place to reside sort of thing mm -hmm. so i think for them of shift you know once again i'm just like say hey you know you'll hear me always tell people it's like say work to be proud of you know even as yeah, a joke yeah. of like say make an effort that is worthy oh. of putting on your mom's refrigerator <laughs> yeah. you know so like, even like, if say, the numbers are bad yeah you're it, still well, like that exactly. was the best i could do that day yeah, i exactly. know that i didn't give up right yeah. whatever because uh, even for us we're always going for mm -hmm. pr mentally yeah. but the reality of like say when you guys are carrying some heavy load it's not possible that doesn't mean that you're laying down and yeah. like say not trying but that is a PR for that day, you know, even with all things considered, the load I'm carrying, or even just, you know, life stress now, like, hey, you know, with all the anxiety, that, that will probably weigh on people's performance yeah. of that stuff. But don't beat yourself up at the end of the day. When I finished the effort, was that the best effort well, I could do? I, I always hear sure. you yelling, your best effort. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it, even it's like we talked about the last video, right, that sort of life stress, whether that's in your relationship or something else, I mean, that that's real, training load without a benefit of you know getting yeah. a positive response from that but you have to acknowledge that stuff so i think now's a good time just for everyone to try to work on just being nicer to themselves maybe less critical of themselves which also translates being less critical to others um, whether that's how you judge people's decisions how they're making um, but once again i'm just like you know even hopefully you know right we'd be hopeful that this whole sort of situation brings people closer on that stuff okay. and that, and that's, I mean, I think a big part of just how you treat yourself, whether that's how critical you are or judgmental, how you treat yourself is how you treat others too. And I think for me that, that took a long time to kind of like figure out, but you know, making the world around you in a situation like this, you know, it's like start with yourself for sure. Like get yourself under control and that will, that will sort of translate to sort of a, kind of a, a piece around for those that you surround yourself with. Um, I'll fix this real quick. But yeah, I mean, what I would be hopeful with this situation, it's, yeah, it's a, it, hopefully it's a chance for people to, you know, slow down and just, you know, work on some level of appreciation for everything, mm -hmm. you know, that we sort of like take for granted too. You yeah, know? and you do seem to find that a lot in any type of tragedy is, yeah, there's some people that try to exploit the situation, but the overwhelming majority tend to be more supportive and mm -hmm. encouraging and kind of brings people together. Yeah, and even for some of the, the meditations that I've been listening to, it's Peter, the sports psychologist, had a good one of just like say, you know, out of this situation, like how, how would you like to be seen? You know, like say the person who is, you know, scared, and you don't want to judge people for any of those emotions, yeah. right? Because it's like say everyone's in a different place on that. But I mean, for all of us here, like say making these videos and just trying to do what we can, just you know, it's a good chance to try to step up and just be, you know, the best person you can be with the thought of like, say, that will, you know, transmit to other people, like say, hey, we're working on this stuff too, that doesn't change anything. And we're, you know, doing the best we can just by trying to be good people and just helping those people around us out the best they can to get through it, you know, and that's, that's, I think, what the human experience should be about. And it's almost like to say, once again, this is a great gift to work on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's in a rough spot. So exactly. Let's it should bring out other. the best in yeah. people, not the worst. And so it's like Peter's sort of analogy, like say, what do you want the pandemic to bring out in you sort of thing? Yeah. You know, and it's like, yeah, people are scared and anxiety and that's, 
all normal on that mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah. then it's like, say, okay. What, what well, do you do with it? Yeah, exactly. I accept that. Hey, I'm scared or I'm anxious or whatever. I see that. I accept that. And then now what sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I think just most of us would want to be seen as like, say, um, helping others or courageous yeah. when the hardship comes, you know, it's like, so how can you help what's mm -hmm. going on? The classic Mr. Rogers, always look for the helpers. Yeah, I, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure on that. But, I mean, that's, I think, a good analogy of looking back. It's like, how, what was your response on that? Yeah, yeah I mean, give yourself time to be uncertain or scared, but then at some point, you know, I accept that, and then now what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that applies to so much of life. Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. and in this situation, right? You're cycling, just you know how you'll help people, whether it's your family or because you know, I mean, for whatever we feel now, imagine for someone who's you know 70 or 80 years old. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. for us, it's seen as oh, it's an inconvenience or this or that. But it's like you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes to where it's like say that that would be even hard to imagine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, is there anything else you guys want to touch on? We're close to an hour, so we got a good bit so far. Um, I think we pretty much covered everything I had taken notes on, thought of. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I guess in that case we'll wrap it up. Um, well, everyone, thanks for watching. If you like stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and we'll keep it coming. I'll link to some helpful stuff below, Andy and Rob's websites, the link to the USAC video about how to handle the... Uh, virus outbreak. They've got a really good one from an really, actual really disease good. expert. Yeah, that's, everyone yeah. definitely should check that one that's out. That's a very good one. Yeah. yeah, they did a great job on that. Yeah. Um, and then also Andy's a link to where you can download Andy's warm-up protocol if you wanted to see that. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to address them after the video gets uploaded. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah, we need to give Abe a shit.